If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. To begin to understand this question, we would like to briefly review a couple of key concepts about electric fields. The first concept is that when you have a positive charge, the electric field is going to be pointing away from that positive charge. And when we have a negative charge, the electric field will be pointing towards that negative charge. The other key concept is that an electric field that is produced by a point charge is equal to a constant multiplied by the magnitude of that charge divided by a distance squared. And we'll be talking more about that distance. Now in this problem, we are aiming to make the electric field produced by these particles equal to zero. And what that ends up meaning is that if we have an electric field that's pointing in one direction, let's say to the left, we would need an electric field pointing in the completely opposite direction but with the same magnitude in order to cancel out both of those electric field vectors. That would be a scenario in which the net electric field would equal zero. So that's really what we're looking for in this problem is two electric fields of the same magnitude but pointing in opposite directions. Now consider a point that's located between the two charges. The electric field that would be produced by the positive charge would be pointing away from the positive charge, as noted earlier. That means that the electric field would be pointing to the right. The electric field produced by the negative charge would be pointing towards the negative charge, and that also would be pointing to the right. Now we can clearly see here that these two vectors, because they point in the same direction, are not going to cancel out, and therefore the net electric field cannot equal zero at this point, or, for that matter, any point between the two charges. So all of this region here between the charges is ruled out as being a place at which the electric field will equal zero. So we might move over to a point that's situated to the right of the negative charge. Now again, the electric field would be pointing towards that negative charge, so we would have an electric field vector pointing to the left and the other electric field would be pointing away from the positive charge, and that would be pointing to the right. Now, at first glance, this looks promising. This looks like we might be able to get these two electric fields to cancel out. The only problem is that the electric field that's produced by the negative charge is always going to be larger than the electric field produced by the positive charge. And the reason for that is that at this point right here, we are both closer to the negative charge which will create a larger electric field, and the magnitude of the charge over here is much greater than the magnitude of the charge over here, there. And so the electric field will always have a larger magnitude compared to the electric field that's pointing in the opposite direction. Therefore, these will never cancel out either, and we cannot have an electric field equal to zero over here. So the only other possible point or region at which the electric field could equal zero would be somewhere to the left of the positive charge. So we would have an electric field that points away from the positive charge. In that case, it would be to the left. And we would have an electric field pointing towards the negative charge. In that case, it would be to the right. And in this case, we can have these two electric fields equal zero if we choose the correct spot. So what we move on to next is basically noting that the electric field that's produced by the positive charge is going to be equal in magnitude to the electric field produced by the negative charge. And so on both sides of this equation, we're going to be using this expression for the electric fields. So on the left side, we will have K multiplied by the magnitude of the charge Q1, which is the positive charge, divided by a distance squared. Now, the distance will be from this point to this positive charge right here. We can label that distance R1. And that's actually basically what we're going to be looking for, or at least the x-coordinate based on that distance. And we're going to continue on, and on the right-hand side of the equation, we're going to have a constant, the same constant, multiplied by the magnitude of Q2, divided by a distance squared. Now this distance would be the distance from Q2 all the way over here to this point. And we will call that distance R2. 
Now, if we look carefully at our setup, we have k appearing on both sides of the equation, so we can eliminate it. And we were told that q2 is equal to negative 4 q1. So right here for q2, we're going to be plugging in negative 4 times q1. Now, of course, we have the absolute value around this negative 4q1. That's actually going to change this numerator into simply positive 4q1. The value of q1 is already positive, as noted in the question, so we don't need the absolute value on the left-hand side. Now, we can simplify this equation even further. Since q1 appears on both sides, we can divide it out. Just don't forget to put a 1 as a placeholder in the numerator on the left side. Now, the problem with this equation is that it contains two variables, so we need to make a substitution so that it becomes an equation of just one variable. Let's look back at our number line very carefully, and let's examine this distance right here between the positive and the negative charge. Now, since the positive charge was located at 20 centimeters and the negative was located at 70 centimeters, then of course that orange distance that we just marked would be 50 centimeters. Now, look very carefully at the number line, and you will see that R1, which is the distance from our point of interest to the positive charge, plus the 50 centimeters is going to equal the entire distance from that point over to the negative charge. It equals R2. You might want to pause the video and make sure that that makes sense. Now, this is convenient because we can take this expression for R2 and substitute it into our equation that we had developed earlier. Notice that the denominator is still squared. And the other denominator being squared is a signal to us that we could do something here to get rid of the squaring. It turns out that we are allowed algebraically to take the square root of each of these quantities. And that's always possible whenever we have a single fraction on one side of the equation equaling a single fraction on the other side of the equation. Now if we come over here, we know that the square root of 1 will remain 1. The square root of r1 squared, of course, will just be r1. Conveniently, in this case, the square root of 4 is 2. And then when we square root this quantity squared, we're going to simply be left with r1 plus 50. Now it's an algebra question. We can cross multiply in order to begin solving for r1. So we would have 2r1 is equal to r1 plus 50. And if we subtract r1 from both sides of this equation, we end up with r1 equaling 50. And this is in centimeters, of course. Now, we're not quite done yet because we needed to find the x-coordinate of this point right here. Well, we know r1 is equal to 50 centimeters, this red distance right here. So what we do is we take the x-coordinate of the positive charge, which was 20, and we simply subtract 50 centimeters to figure out what the x-coordinate of this black point is right here. Now, in this case, it's rather easy because the x-coordinate of the positive charge is simply 20, and then we subtract the 50 centimeters, and we get a nice whole number value of negative 30 centimeters. So this would be the x-coordinate of this point at which the net electric field will equal zero. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. And also, you are welcome to send in a picture or a full text of your question to the email address on the screen. I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.